Hello everyone, welcome back. One of the most common questions that I get is if I have to uh, um, do anything to get this um, Pro Mag drum to fit this uh, Lynx 12. Now I bought this about eight to 10 years ago. Um, uh, and I remember when I got it, there was instructions for getting this to fit uh, onto the Sega 12. Because back then, the Lynx 12 didn't exist yet. Uh, back then, I got this to fit for my for my Sega 12. Um, and uh, I remember that there was instructions that came with it. I guess they don't include the instructions anymore because enough people have asked me that, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't think it's a case of one or two people losing the paper or them forgetting to include the paper. I'm thinking that they really don't include the instructions. Um, so yeah, uh, I, from what I recall, the instruction said that you may have to file a little bit off the back. Don't use a drum, just use a little file. File a little bit off the back if you need to. File a little bit off the front if you need to. And you may also have to file these areas right here on the side, right? There's like a little ledge on the side here. Um, looking at this, um, I, it, it doesn't look like I did any filing work on the front or the back. It looks like I did a little filing work on the edge over here uh, where it inserts where it actually uh, makes contact with the uh, uh, with the magazine well okay now um, like I said when I initially uh, modified this I modified this to fit my uh, uh, my uh, Sega 12 uh, and I can see that on the Lynx 12 uh, when I put it in okay I can see that I got a little bit of play over there so it looks like I would probably would not have had to modify it for the Lynx 12, um, or I could have modified it less. However, it, it, it still does work fine, uh, so I have no issue. Also, when I fill this up, when, when you put a, sh a shell in there, um, there's, this tightens up because there's not the, 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 the because right now this is empty. So when you when you when you put even one shell in there, now that shell is pressing up against the bottom of the bolt, so this doesn't wobble as much. Okay. Uh, it's just wobbling now because it's empty. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, basically it's a lot easier to remove material than to add material. So that's why I think they put extra material around this. Um, and plus, you know, with AKs, um, they're pretty notorious uh, where they have like consistency uh, differences from one to the other. Uh, so that's why I think they put extra material where you have to file it down. So. Um, so yeah, you, as you're putting it in, you gotta just kind of look at it and see where it's catching. Is it is it like not locking into place, right? So when when you go to put it in, like that, is it does it look like there's not enough room in the back for it to actually snap in? Okay, um, you know, so, you know, is it is it making contact over here where, where it's not letting it go? So you gotta look at it and see where you have to remove material from. Um, you know, you know, file it away just a little bit at a time, you know, just enough to get it to, to fit. Also makes sense to order it from someplace where you can return it in case uh, you really screw it up, right? So order it from one of these warehouses where you can basically say, hey, it's broken, don't work, uh, I'm gonna return it and get your money back or exchange it. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're ordering um, something like this that you may have to uh, modify. Now, um, I've, I've covered this in other videos. One of the things to be aware of with these, uh, with the drums, um, it looks really cool, um, but it, when you fill it up, uh, it gets really heavy. Um, I think it's a 20 round mag. Um, and also when you're shooting this, basically it tends to hit your forearm. So I, I really prefer to stick mags. However, this is something that you, you should have one. I mean, I, I mean, I think I've only shot this maybe, maybe 10 times or less in the eight years that I've had it. Uh, so usually, Kind of hold it like for celebration or you know if i want to impress somebody or something like you know uh do a like fourth of july video or something i'll whip this out and i'll just like you know blast away with it but most of the time um i'm shooting with stick mags i mean I, this this lynx 12 here already is up to like 15,000 rounds so i do a lot of shooting um i use this to train people so these guns do a lot of shooting um now w while i got you guys here and we're talking about uh the lynx 12 with the drum mags uh, let me tell you guys, the reason why I originally bought the Sega 12, all right, was because I had gone to a gun range um, and uh, somebody had a street sweeper. There you go. Somebody had a street sweeper there, which was a uh, drum-fed uh, shotgun. It wasn't a semi-auto shotgun like this. It, uh, it wasn't an AK-style shotgun. It was a drum-fed shotgun that was manually operated. Um, you had to basically fill up the shells one by one, and then you had to 
wind it up. Um, there was no sights on the gun, right? So, I, you, so it had this flip-up stock. Uh, so when you would shoot it, from what I recall, I think it was half a pull would rotate the, the drum, and then the other half of the pull would shoot it. Going on memory now from a very from like more than eight to ten years ago, um, you know. So so and then and then um, it did not. Uh, it wasn't semi-automatic, so it would not automatically eject the the, the, the shells. There was a, an ejection rod where you would have to actually push them out one at a time. Um, so, but but I had never seen anything like it. This was before I had ever seen the Sega 12, and I um, I saw a guy had it at a gun range, and I'm like, oh wow, that is like super cool. Can I try it? You know, shot the gun. The guy said that look, he was looking to sell it. Um, I said, wow, this is definitely awesome. I want to buy this. I, I'd be happy. But I said before I before I actually first of all, well, I don't have enough money on me, but um, let me go get some money and uh, let me uh, do some quick research on it to see what I'm getting into. So, uh, you know, ran home, uh, got on the computer, uh, looked up the gun, and I found out that it was uh, th that the ATF had classified it as a Class Three destructive device. So basically, it was basically in the same category as a machine gun. Um, and I, I really just didn't want to get into that type of a mess. Uh, I train people, um, so it's like, you know, any gun I'm buying, I'm going to train people on, so it's going to be out there, it's going to be seen, so I, I can't, you know, I can't use guns that I can't, like, be seen publicly with them, okay, so it didn't make sense for me to buy it at that time, and at that time, I, you know, like, you know, at the, any gun I bought, I had to be able to use it, um, so uh, I went back, I told the guy, yeah, sorry, I can't buy it. Did you know it's a class three destructive device classified as a machine gun? Basically, the guy said he, he, the guy did not know that. I told him, man, you better get this gun out of here. Um, I never saw the guy again. Never heard from him again. So I, I you know, if you're if you're the ATF watching this, I have no idea what the guy is. Okay, uh, and even if I knew, I wouldn't tell. Uh, but anyway, that's a side point. Um, but yeah, um, so that that that's the story. And basically, after shooting that gun, I was like, this is so awesome. Uh, I immediately uh, uh, went to a couple of different gun forums because back then there was way before Facebook, so, didn't, so, so back then we had gun forums, and I told people I shot this awesome street sweeper thing. Uh, you know, what can I get? You know, I, I want to buy something. What, what can I buy that's close to it? You know, and then people told me about the Sega 12. Uh, within I think a week or two, I had bought myself a Sega 12. Um, you know, and I loved it. Uh, started training people on it. First, I started training myself on it. Then I started training people on it. They loved it. Turned out to be a great money maker. Ended up buying two Sega 12s. They each went about 30,000 rounds each uh, before the bolt carrier started cracking. I did videos on that. You'll find it um, in my channel. I actually have a, a, a playlist for the Lynx 12 where I actually show you guys. Um, uh, I do a comparison. I show you guys how the bolt carrier started cracking after 30,000 rounds uh, on both of them. I broke both of them. And, um, you know, basically after they banned the imports, you couldn't buy any more parts so at that point I said okay great I need a replacement now I went to the cheetah uh, the cheetah 12 was available at the time bought that cheetah 12 completely sucked um, would not cycle the, the dust cover was flying off every time I shot it, it was a horrible gun uh, got rid of that actually from there before I even got before I even sold that I heard some good things about the Lynx 12 bought that the gun was an instant winner uh, I transferred over the the stock from the Sega 12 to the Lynx 12. So this, this a lot of people have asked me where I got this stock because there's no adapter or anything. This basically fits right into it because it was designed to go onto the Sega 12. Um, so so yeah, I, I don't think this is available anymore. Uh, so but yeah, this was originally meant for the Sega 12. I basically transferred it from the Sega 12 onto the Lynx 12s when I bought these guns. Um, and right now I've got. Two working ones, uh, each with about 15,000 rounds on them. Uh, on one of them, I bolt, I broke the bolt. I did a, a video on that. I did also have, I have also replaced the recoil springs. They didn't, recoil springs didn't break, but they're, they're starting to wear. Um, and at this point, this one's also starting to wear. <laughs> this is, it's, all, it's, it's kind of on the light side. Uh, actually, this, uh, I, I pulled out the wrong gun. This one's not. I think the other one that I have, that was, uh, that one's even lighter than that. Um, so, so the, the recoil springs are starting to wear, so you want to get extra recoil springs, get yourself some extra bolts, they're not that expensive, uh, I think the bolts, the bolts themselves are $30, uh, you will have to fit it, I, there's a video on that in my channel that you guys should check out, but yeah, get yourself 
extra recoil springs, that'll be the first thing that goes. Get yourself um, at least one extra bolt, and that that get the one that comes with the extractor and the firing pin and all that. You'll have to do a little bit of fitting. I talk about that on my channel. Um, but it, it's a great gun. I mean, it's uh, I, I do lots of shooting. Great thing about this is it shoots bird shot right out of, like right out of the box. You know, as long as you adjust the valve uh, to the big hole over here, uh, it will shoot bird shot as um, that's like 1,200 feet per second or faster. Uh, my, these guys here, because the recoil springs are worn out, they, they'll cycle with with even 11, 1145. Uh, bird shot so even the weaker stuff they, they will cycle it because the springs just so so one in but generally speaking you want to get 1200 uh, uh, feet per second and higher on your bird shot so that it will cycle uh, reliably okay um, but it's a great gun I love it uh, I even uh, screwed in a tactical rail here where I can mount the light and at night I actually bust clay discs um, at night using the light with this so um, and I, I've mounted the red dot on here. This is the house on 507 CU on a um, UTG rail pretty cheap rail uh, At some point I'll look into getting it because they got this stupid uh, side rail here That's completely unnecessary probably add some extra weight. I should probably just take a drum and cut this out But whatever it doesn't matter that much uh, But yeah, this is this is awesome. I love this gun, but uh, yeah, I basically I just wanted to do a video on how to modify your Pro Mag uh, drum to get it to fit that in case it doesn't fit, and basically you just gotta look at it, see where it catches. Um, and like I said, the original instructions that I got said that you had to modify it. Uh, I, th I think it said go to the back if you need to, go to the front if you need to. I didn't. I needed to go over here on my Sega 12, when I, you know, which is what I got this for originally. On this one, I can see I probably wouldn't need to modify it at all. It looks it like it would just fit. But then again, this one is, is at least 8 to 10 years old. Um, the ones that they're making today might be just a little bit different. Uh, you know, so just some things for you guys to be aware of. So uh, if you do find other instructions on ProMag's uh, website or anywhere else, uh, follow their instructions first. I mean, those are obviously going to be the most up-to-date instructions, uh, ones that come from ProMag directly. But, uh, you know, since a lot of people are asking me, I'm going to kind of assume that, those instructions are not available, so that's why I wanted to do this video for you guys. So, uh, if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.